everybody, welcome to the Impressive channel. There are several topics I wanna get into in this video, and I first wanna start off by talking about some new music. But before I get into this topic, I wanna thank HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. I've been using HelloFresh for a while now, and let me tell you, it's the real deal. With delicious, family-friendly, calorie-smart, pescatarian, and vegetarian options every week, HelloFresh makes it easier to eat well. Plus, every recipe is packed with fresh produce sourced directly from farmers. Also, HelloFresh's pre-portioned ingredients means there's less prep for you and less wasted food. Now, the holidays can be hectic, but HelloFresh recipes and ingredients allow you to cut out grocery shopping and their limited edition holiday boxes deliver everything you need to cook up a holiday family feast. No planning necessary. This week, I decided to go with the vegetarian option and the dish you see me cooking here is the mushroom and herb shepherd's pie. Trust me, it's delicious. Go to HelloFresh.com and use the promo code IMPRESSIVE14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. That's right, 14 free meals and three free gifts. So start your healthy meal plan today by visiting HelloFresh.com. Now back to the topic, I wanna get into some new music. First, I wanna give a shout out to Tank and the Bangas. Tank and the Bangas released a song with Big Frida called Big. And I have literally had this song on repeat, like nonstop. I love this song and I love Tank and the Bangas too. I think they're a very talented and very, very underrated group. So if you get a chance, please support and check out their music. Also, another song that I've been loving is Beyonce's new single called Be Alive. And this single is actually for the soundtrack for the movie King Richard, which is a biopic based off of Serena and Venus Williams' father. And I love this song. I love the message. I love how empowering it is. And I love the emotion behind Beyonce's voice. Beyonce sounds amazing. She's like in a different form vocally right now. Her voice has matured a lot and it sounds great. And I love the melodies and the harmonies and the different inflections and runs. Like Beyonce was really singing and it's been a while since she's pushed her vocals like this in the studio. When she sings live, she's always gonna sing her face off, but I do miss studio records like this. And Be Alive sounds like something that could have easily came out of her four era, which is probably why I like it so much. I like it, I love the song. I also want to talk a little bit about Bruno Mars and the artist Anderson Pack. They recently released their highly anticipated album, An Evening with Silk Sonic, and I actually enjoyed this project a lot. This was really a feel good album. And a lot of the sounds on this album, of course, were inspired by some of the soul songs in the 80s and the 70s, which I actually loved. I love the fact that Bruno and Anderson are kind of reintroducing newer audiences to this sound. And I think it works for them. But if I have to give a slight critique, I will say I don't think what they're doing is particularly innovative or creative. While I enjoyed the sound of the album, I do think they're kind of using a cheat code by emulating the black soul music of the past. But one thing I could appreciate is the musicianship. I could appreciate the band. I could appreciate Bruno's great vocals. I could appreciate Anderson Pack eating up the drums in the background. I thought the album as a whole was presented really well. And I do think the album is going to do well in sales. Now there is one R&B album that did really good in its first week and that's Summer Walker's album Still Over It. Y'all already know that I really love Still Over It. In fact, I did do a review on it in my previous video. I think the album is definitely one of the strongest R&B albums of the year. And the fact that it did so well in its first week, and I mean very well for an R&B album, I think that's great. And she actually did better numbers in her first week than a lot of the pop and hip hop albums that were released this year. I'm sure the industry is scratching their heads right now to see an R&B singer like Summer outsell some of the bigger acts that had more playlisting and more promotion than she did. But I love to see it. I love that Summer is doing her thing and she's representing for R&B music. 
also another thing I want to bring up is Summer did address the rumors surrounding her deal with her label. Now, Rolling Stone did post an article about Summer signing a bad deal, but Summer did respond and say that she actually renegotiated her contract. So the 360 deal that she signed back in 2017 does not look like the same deal that she has now. And I hope she's telling the truth about that because I would hate for Summer to be completely ripped off by her label. You never really know in the industry because a lot of these artists are getting ripped off but I hope that Summer is at least benefiting more than she did before. Now, moving on, I wanna talk about the singer, Chloe Bailey. Earlier this week, Chloe received a lot of backlash when she posted this awkward thank you video for her fans. To my 4 million followers and counting, my candy kisses and my clovers, thank you all so much for loving me and I love you right on back. There's a lot more to come. Mm. <laughs> now, when I saw this video, I'm not gonna lie, I did laugh out loud because I'm like, Chloe, girl, like what you doing? Like what made you post this? <laughs> now, I think Chloe was trolling when she did this. I think she was trying to get some attention because Chloe knows exactly what to do to trend and get talked about on the blogs. It's a strategy and it's something that she has been using to her advantage. But I think with this recent post, she got so much backlash. People were calling her extra and cringy and thirsty and it was just a mess. And it got to a point where she actually had to delete her video because she was getting bullied too much. And that's kind of unfortunate. I don't think she expected that type of reaction. Like I said before, I do think Chloe was trolling. I think she was trying to be sexy, but she was doing it in a funny and satirical way. And she was doing it for attention as well. And honestly, I don't even have an issue with her doing little things to get some attention because I know it's a strategy that she's using to promote herself. And a lot of artists do the exact same thing. But I do think that she has to be a little careful of what she puts out there in regards to her image. I don't want certain antics to overshadow her talent. I don't want her to be like a Lizzo. Lizzo is very talented, but her antics have become more of a conversation than her music. And I don't want this for Chloe. I think Chloe is way too talented and she has way too much potential to go down this route. So I think she has to be a little bit more selective with what she puts out there. Now, after the controversy, Chloe did preview some new music. And I thought this was smart because it puts the attention back where it needs to be. And that's on her music. Right now, Chloe is experimenting with her sound. She's rapping a little bit. So I think it's interesting. I'm interested to hear her upcoming project and see what she has in store. Now I wanna move on and briefly talk about the actress Megan Good and her husband, Devon Franklin. Now there have been some rumors going on that Megan and Devon are going through a rocky patch. In fact, this rumor was reported on the Ricky Smalley show. And some people have noticed that Megan and Devon haven't posted each other on their pages in months. Also, they haven't been seen together publicly in months. So there is some speculation that there might be something going on between them, but it's only speculation. Megan still goes by Miss Franklin in her bio, so she still uses her married name. Also back in August, Devon made a series of posts wishing Megan happy birthday. And last month in October, Megan posted this selfie and in her location, she said, Devon's crib. So I assume that she and Devon are still together. They're probably not posting each other as often because they have their own separate brands. But I do think some of the speculation is understandable because we haven't seen Devon and Megan make a public appearance together in some months. Megan has made several public appearances by herself and sometimes she has gone out without wearing her ring and other times she wears a ring that is different from her wedding ring. And there could be multiple reasons for that that has nothing to do with any impending separation or divorce, but it is something that I've noticed. I noticed that Megan is wearing a different ring from her wedding ring. 
I also noticed an interesting post that Devon made about relationships and marriage. So again, I'm, I'm not saying stay in a relationship that, you know, that doesn't work for you or any of that. I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying before you just jump out of the relationship or jump into a relationship or jump out of the marriage, evaluate yourself. Are there things in me that I need to change? And am I doing the work to help myself change? So from watching that, it could add fuel to the speculation that maybe Megan and Devon are separated and they're kind of figuring things out. And this could all very well be a reach. This whole topic about Megan and Devon separating is a reach because there is no proof that they have separated. But the rumors are out there and I think people are starting to notice that they haven't been seen together in a while. But until they make something public, we can't really assume. We should just let them live their lives and hope for the best. Now on to the last topic, I want to talk about Wendy Williams. It's being reported by The Sun that Wendy's show can potentially be replaced with Nick Cannon's show if she does not return anytime soon. Now Wendy did put a message on her social media page saying that she's still taking more time off to focus on her health. Now, back in September, Wendy did go through a serious mental and health breakdown. She was actually hospitalized for psychiatric evaluation, and it was alleged that she was struggling with addiction leading up to her hospitalization. Also, she was struggling from different health complications from her Graves disease and her COVID diagnosis. So Wendy has gone through a lot of different health complications over the past few months, and she had to take much needed time away from her show to fully recover however it's being alleged that the network is getting a little impatient with Wendy because she has not yet signed a new contract for her show also she's taken longer than expected to return now what's interesting is since Wendy has been absent her ratings have been steadily growing when the actress and comedian Sherry Shepard guest hosted for Wendy the ratings were surprisingly decent and Sherry got a lot of great feedback after she guest hosted. And I wouldn't be surprised if the network considered to bring her back on the show again, but I don't think Wendy wants that. I think Wendy is more comfortable with men guest hosting on her show. I understand that Wendy doesn't want the network getting any ideas to replace her with another woman. She doesn't wanna deal with that competition. And I think Sherry Shepard can potentially give Wendy some competition because the fans really liked her. But at the end of the day, nobody can replace Wendy Williams. She's the reason why people watch her show. She's the one who built her show. So nobody can replace her, but there are some people who can compete with her. And the longer she stays out, the more the networks are going to try to look for that contender. As of right now, the network is actually eyeing Nick Cannon. Now, Nick Cannon has his own show right now, and it was reported that his ratings weren't all that great. In fact, his show only debuted with 400,000 viewers, which is a lot less than what Wendy brings in on average. So he underperformed, and I don't know if he's gonna be the best contender, but according to The Sun, it's being reported that if Wendy does not sign her new contract and return to her show, Nick Cannon will allegedly replace her slot on daytime TV. I don't know if this is true or not, but this is being alleged. But anyway, tell me what you all think about this situation down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.